right, welcome back. So today I'm going to be covering the um, Milwaukee Fuel. This is the brushless fuel M12 vacuum here. It's not the M18. This is the M12. They're newer. The newer model, a lot more compact than the M um, the M18. But uh, it's not brand new. I've had this for a few months now. I've used it on a couple projects. Nothing too crazy. I've yet to use it for um, a wet vac. But as far as dry um, materials, it works real well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead today and do a couple uh, demonstrations just to try to put the specifications to the, to the test using um, a few tools here that I had on hand. I've got uh, my, my Testo hot wire, field piece, um, JL3 manometers. I'm going to use my CPS um, ABM200. Um, vein anemometer here so essentially I wanted to go ahead and try to put try to test the actual specification the manufacturer specification on the website um, so if you go to the website I'm showing 45 CFM uh, airflow total volume 45 uh, cubic foot per minute um, you got a 42 inches of uh, water column essentially suction pressure for the dry vacuum applications and uh, I don't have any instruments to test the sound level so I don't know if we're gonna get into that I just want to go ahead and just check test the actual CFM and the um, essentially the water column the the pressure that this thing is able to um, produce so okay, let's go ahead and start off with Let's start off with the manometer here and check our pressures. So let me go ahead and show you the uh, inside of the tool itself. It's pretty straightforward. It's a really nice compact design. I really do like the way everything just essentially tucks in. I believe the M18 and even the DeWalt. I did have the DeWalt at one point in time, but I didn't really like that. But the other vacuums don't stow away like this you have to pretty much wrap the hose around the outside but this one i mean everything fits pretty well on the inside even the vat battery is a little bit better protected from the elements here uh, so essentially like i said we've got our hose in here this is the one for uh, tight spaces and corners and you've got one here just for general flat surfaces carpets floors also Whoops. Also, what I like about it as well, give you a little bit more um, capacity, not only capacity, but just power. These um, also will take the XC batteries. So this is the 4, four amp hour. You can also use the 6 amp hour. But um, yeah, that definitely, those XC batteries definitely do give you a little bit more punch, uh, especially, like I said, using them with drills and things like that. Uh, they definitely make a difference, so I imagine it's going to do the same with this here vacuum. Um, as well, you just have a quick little here um, also you just this is just the um container here it stores all the debris and an easy to clean filter. This here is just to stop in case the vacuum turns upside down. Speaking of that, matter of fact, that is one negative about this design. I'll show you here. One negative about this design, because it's so top heavy, I'll tell you one thing. Like if you're going to vacuum, you're trying to reach in four corners. As you go to pull this hose to reach different, can't reach either. Because it's so top heavy, as you go to pull, if you're trying to reach in a corner or something, I'm not able to recreate it now, but I think the bottom's gotta be a little bit more full, can't be empty. But sometimes the thing will just tip over. And uh, it's a little bit of a nuisance because that'll pretty much stop the 
you know the suction due to that um, little governor in there but um so yeah essentially that's pretty much a quick overview of the vacuum you've got this here discharge port we can actually connect the hose and just have I guess um, a weak blower 45 CFM blower I guess it's just kind of I don't know not usable for anything I can imagine so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test the static pressure using this uh, field piece JL3 MN manometer and I mean we'll see if it if it uh, matches the lab spec but I'm just going to pretty much do like a crude experiment here so I've got this here taped off I'm just going to go ahead and just shove the manometer in here and just try to seal it as best as possible while I've got the vacuum running we'll see what kind of um uh, water column reading we have here what type of pressure readings we get so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my field piece app here measurements the manometer should pop up there we go so I hit the zero button that should zero us out so now all I've got to do here connect this here hose assembly just uh, shut the manometer down there let's see what we get here let's see if I can display it in a way where Put it on high. Shove it up in there. Trying to make sure. Let's put it on high. So we've got negative 33 inches of water column. And what was the manual? So the specs 42 inches of water column on the actual manual. I might not have had a really good seal on that to be honest. So, I mean, 35 is pretty close. I'm not going to lie about it. Now let's try that out. I mean, it's just hard to get it to properly get a, a good solid seal. More try. Another thing is the battery is dying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another battery real quick. So yeah, that's the thing about these things. The battery literally might last you 20, 30 minutes full bore. Maybe, well, no, probably more like 15 to 20 minutes, actually. Sorry. But, um, oh, yeah, that's a full battery there. Let's see if that makes any difference. Oh, I know it will. Okay. Put it high. There we go. So about 40.3. Pretty cool. So that test, I'd give that a pass. Um, I claim 42, I believe it was. Yep, 42, and I got 40.3. I 
yeah, we'll give that a pass. Next, we're going to go ahead and test our CFM. And I'm going to just do that wide open, take this tip off of here. Put that back in there. So, let's see here. Done with that. First, I'm going to check, test it using the Sears CPS AMB 200. So I'm going to check the, let's do the inlet and the outlet. First, let's measure inner diameter of that. Inner diameter is looking like it's about... An inch, maybe an inch, like one point. Let's say like one point. Just do an inch, because it's literally just above an inch. So I'll put, I'll take round. There's no grill in place. And we'll just do this is a return because it's negative pressure. And then I'm gonna just do round, one inch diameter. Now what you want to do is let it ramp up to speed first. So all I'm gonna do is literally just hold this here. On here like such. And then just... So we got 47 CFM. Alright. Should be able to see that. 47 CFM. The manual or the, the website claim 45 CFM, as you can see there. So that's cool. That's really good, actually. So now let's test the outlet here. So there's an outlet, and the inner diameter of that. To about inch and a quarter, maybe an inch. Let's say an inch and a quarter. So we'll just do supply. It's already checked. Supply is already checked, and we'll just make that slightly bigger. One point two five. Continue. I'm just gonna put this on the outlet here, like such. Start it up. Now, I'm going to check with this here Testo 405i and check both the um, inlet and the outlet. So I'm going to select configure measurements 1.25. It's an inch and a quarter round supplier. Okay. One CFM at uh, 4,800 foot per minute. All right, so what's the vacuum review without testing the actual suction power on? Um, so I've just basically got a rug here. Well, not a rug, but just a floor mat. And I'm going to just try sucking up some of this larger material. And I've got some uh, smaller stuff here. Just to get an idea of... Um, just how strong it is. Like I said, it's not super impressive, but for what it is, it's decent.
Either way, uh, the tests actually seem to work out pretty well. That's what I love about these types of precision instruments. I mean, pretty much getting close results, the same, well, similar results that they would get in the laboratory. Um, so it shows you these instruments are very useful um, and, once again, accurate, most importantly. So um, that's pretty much all I've got for today as far as um, just testing the actual the specs that they claim on the site. That's one thing I always do, I always have respect about Milwaukee. Even though these specs aren't the most amazing for a wet dry vac, I mean, hey, they're being honest about it. You know, it's like it's you're getting you get what you you see type situation with them a lot of the times. That's one reason why I stick with them as far as the tools that I buy because they don't they don't have too much um, that I've noticed just false advertising and just you know extreme um, marketing techniques that are just pretty much misleading. So uh, that's pretty much all I got for today, though camera's about to go dead on me again so um let me know if you like this video if you do go ahead and give it a like set thumbs up also let me know what you think about this um milwaukee vacuum it's the brushless uh, m12 version and uh we'll catch you on the next one thanks